G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for round nine's edition of Just the Tips. I had another poor week on the track this week with my footy tipping, which may shock you. Uh, I got the first couple of wrong. I tipped the power to win the showdown. I tipped Carlton to beat Collingwood. Tip the Sydney Derby correctly. I tipped the Saints to beat North. I did tip the Cats to have the better of Melbourne. That was the next one I got wrong. Essendon over West Coast. Fremantle over Richmond were right. And then the last two games were interesting actually so I tipped the Bulldogs to beat Hawthorne I think most did got that one wrong and I tipped the Gold Coast Suns in just the tips and I'm not gonna lie to you I didn't even change that I must have just hit Brisbane in real time and I've given uh, gotten that one right um, unlike a previous one where I changed it a couple of weeks ago I changed my tip I think from West Coast to Gold Coast and uh, that was right in this case I think I accidentally tipped Brisbane I thought I tipped Gold Coast until I checked out the results later but either way some luck there because I got that tip right and uh, that takes me to five out of nine before we proceed with my tips for round nine let's go through who all the winners are from our various competitions so in our members tipping competition Graz has won once again this is not for the first time the round with eight correct tips and a margin of 24 Peter Rina took out our general competition with a score of eight and a margin of nine. Grass has then taken the lead back in our members tipping competition with an overall score of 53, while Cristiani retains top spot for another week with 54 overall and a margin of 234. We do have a new first time fantasy league leader with Hayden Jelmy taking the lead with an impressive score of 21.43 this week, which brings his average to 2015 and leading our competition. So I think that's for the first time. Well done, Hayden. This also seems like a great opportunity to shout out and welcome two new members of the True Footy YouTube channel. We've got Rowan Carney and we've got Matt who joined up in the last week. So I just want to give you a big shout out and thank you for your support on this channel. All right, without further ado, let's crack into round nine. And the blockbusters don't stop. We've got another really good game here between Carlton and Melbourne. Carlton coming off that last gasp loss to the Pies um, in a game where they conceded a lot of inside 50s, had more of the ball, massively out-tackled and then undone by a Nick Dacos deep into the game. And unfortunately, in the last three games, they've come unstuck against Pies and now the Crows. And there's a good win over GWS in there. Melbourne, on the other hand, are coming off beating the top team of the competition, Geelong, who were previously undefeated. They took them on at the G in a dour defensive game. Were able to come up with the chocolates, and I didn't expect that result, and that certainly gives them more legitimacy. So out of the form of these two sides at the moment, you'd have to say that the Ds are probably coming into this a little bit more hot. Let's look at the head-to-head, -head, though. This is uh, interesting reading. So Carlton won the last two games against, uh, well, between these two sides both by under a goal. And the time before that, Melbourne won by 17. The time before that, Melbourne won by five. So there's been some good clashes with these two sides. And Carlton have won the last two. And that actually does make me think that they might bob up and win this one. I'm still getting my mind around like who's actually the better team this year. At the moment, you know, I think it's safer to say the Ds. They claim some bigger scalps, but... I'm feeling that the head-to-head -head here is making me want to tip Carlton, and that would just be a very Carlton thing to do. I, again, I don't think it's necessarily the, the better of these two teams, but I'm going to go with Carlton here for three consecutive wins over the Ds, and I'll say it's probably by nine points, so another thriller. Geelong versus Port Adelaide. This game was shaping up as a potential blockbuster, and it might still be. It might still be, but... The Cats are uh, obviously undone last week against Melbourne. Two defensively dour sides playing off in a very defensively dour game last week with the Ds getting the chocolates. But nonetheless, the Cats have up to that point been the benchmark of the competition. Port Adelaide are, uh, you know, just a little bit inconsistent this year. And maybe that's probably actually putting it generously. I thought they were quite poor against the Crows and kick five goals 18. They haven't got the kicking boots on and I feel like they need to be in top gear really and, and playing really well to give me confidence that they could go to GMHBA which is a very hard place for traveling teams to win I do feel like Port play all right there in fact the last time they played there last year uh, the Cats won by 12 points that being said it does seem like the Cats are a lot stronger comparatively this year so I think I, I can't tip Port Adelaide at the moment. I do think they're a pretty good side. I think they'll bounce back. I don't think they're playing great footy. I don't know if they're a ser serious contender, but they need to be a serious contender, I think, to win at GMHBA. So I'm going to tip the Cats to win this by 20 two points. Fremantle versus Sydney could be one of the more intriguing matchups this coming round. Fremantle coming off a big win against a struggling Richmond. Sydney knocking off GWS. I think with both of these sides, it's interesting that they're kind of play well regardless of the ground you know when when Fremantle are playing well it doesn't matter whether they're home or away equally when they're playing poorly it doesn't matter whether they're home or away and Sydney equally I think are, are kind of like that as well they, you'd back them in to play any ground in Australia GMHBA MCG Adelaide Perth they can win it when they're on but equally their home ground advantage isn't necessarily that pronounced 
um, which makes this an interesting clash. I think Sydney have won the last two at Optus Stadium between these two sides. And interestingly, they traded wins last year where Fremantle won the one in Sydney. So that demonstrates my point. So Sydney travel well and they play this ground well. And they're the better form side. That being said, I think Fremantle are clearly better than last year. This is somewhere between the 2022 and the 2023 Fremantle is the, is the current Fremantle we've got. So there are definitely a chance to beat the Swans here. But the Swans do play this ground well and are probably the team of the competition right now. So... I think I'm going to tip the Swans narrowly, but I would not be surprised if Fremantle come out and win this game. So I'll go to the Swans by eight points. Now we've got Hawthorne versus St Kilda. And, uh, you know, after about four rounds, you'd be very confident that St Kilda would win this game. But the gap has closed a little bit. St Kilda enjoying some indifferent form, shall we say. Um, very lackluster at times. Admittedly, they are coming off a win, but it was against North Melbourne, who Hawthorne also beat comfortably. Hawthorne have won two of their last five, I think. The aforementioned win over North Melbourne and most recently a win over the Bulldogs at Marvel Stadium. So it's a team that's two and six versus three and five. I do think St Kilda should win this game, but I am iffy about it. So if we look at the fact that this game is in Launceston, you can go back to the University of Tasmania Stadium, which is the same ground. And the last time they played was 2018 and 2017. And the Hawks won one and the Saints won the other. And we're so far removed from those teams that I don't think that really matters. I have a feeling the Hawks are doing that thing where they started the year poorly and now they might be, this might be the real version of Hawthorne where they might not be good enough to make the eight in my opinion, but they're actually, you know, a pretty decent young competitive side. St Kilda by comparison are a finals quality side that is underperforming. And the way these two teams intersect right now makes me think a cup upset could be on the cards, but... I think I'm going to go conservative and say that the Saints win this, but I think it will be close. This one is pretty 50-50 for me. I'm going to say St Kilda. I'm going to back them in by four points. Then we've got Essendon and GWS. And again, the gap has closed a little bit between these two sides. Aside from the 31%, we're now just two points, which Essendon uh, gained slash lost in the uh, game against Collingwood. So Essendon coming off a trip to Perth, uh, where they got the job done, overcame a fast-finishing West Coast and looked pretty solid doing it, uh, winning by six points. GWS, on the other hand, losing the Sydney Derby, and were a little bit disappointing along the way. They'll lose Callum Brown for this game. Tom Green might be a chance to play, I think, is cleared of structural damage. Essendon's still trying to prove themselves, and what they'll, what they'll need to do to prove themselves is claim a big scout. If you look at the teams that Essendon's played this year and beaten, They've beaten the Saints, they've beaten the Bulldogs, they've drew with Collingwood. All those teams are currently outside the eight, West Coast most recently. The two teams they've lost to were Sydney, who are top of the ladder, and Port Adelaide, who currently actually sit below Essendon. So, therefore, need to claim a big scalp, and therefore, this is a tricky test for them. GWS, I don't think, are in the hottest form right now. They look like they're coasting a little bit, which could be a bit of a form slump. Who knows? Well, look at the head-to-head. And this game specifically at Marble Stadium. Now, these two teams traded a win each. Interestingly, Essendon beat them in the first game in round four. In the second half of the year, what happened was GWS obviously exploded and Essendon fell away badly in the last seven weeks or so. And look at that margin, 162 to 36. Again, I don't think we're going to see anything like that in this game. I don't think the gap's that big. I think Essendon went through, you know, it was a particularly bad day and a particularly bad run of form. I think this is winnable for Essendon. I think I'm probably... 60-40 60-40 leaning towards GWS, but I think I'll shake it up this week. And I'll tip the Dons to win this by six points. I feel like this was one of their better wins last year. Uh, I could be remembering that wrong, but either way, tipping the Dons, they've been pretty good. Let's see it, six points. Richmond versus the Western Bulldogs will be interesting. Two somewhat struggling sides at the moment. Richmond, you know, like their injury issues are, are well documented. They currently sit second last on the ladder, 71.7%, and most recently a big loss to Fremantle at the MCG. So I think they're struggling a little bit, and uh, it's tough to see them winning this game. The Bulldogs, Fortnite hasn't been great. I mean, losing to Fremantle in Perth, um, fair enough, but then, you know, losing to Hawthorne at Marvel Stadium when there's already, already a lot of pressure on this season is a bit of a red flag. Tom Liberatore is going to miss some football indefinitely as well, and he's been an important clearance player for them this year. So it's hard to have confidence in them, but it's also very hard to have confidence in Richmond, who, while I think have played some spirited football this year, I do think at the moment there's too much adversity to feel confident about them. I feel like the pressure really mounted on Beveridge and the Bulldogs, and then they beat St Kilda unexpectedly by 10 goals. Um, Will that happen again? I'm not too sure. I have a feeling Richmond's going to play well. I feel like they play against the Bulldogs quite well. And therefore, oh, this is a tough one. This could be a real upset here, and it would be probably curtains for Bevo if they lost, but I'm going to tip 
the dogs, but maybe in a close game. I, I predict Richmond will play well, but just don't quite have it in the bag. Gold Coast versus North Melbourne at Metricon Stadium. Again, Gold Coast coming off a disappointing Q clash loss after a you know fairly convincing win against West Coast. They have been good against the teams you'd expect them to beat and failed the test poorly against teams ranked above them. Now, North Melbourne here are firmly entrenched on the bottom of the ladder at the moment. That being said, we saw you know signs of life last week. I thought the youth played quite well. There is every chance that North will take any given game and choose that to be the one that they unexpectedly beat someone. And Gold Coast could be vulnerable here. However, their form at home has been solid. Um, their wins over Richmond, Adelaide, West Coast and Hawthorne were all at home. I predict that their tough midfield will be too good for North, who do struggle when it comes to contested ball. And that's where I think Gold Coast will have their measure, who they just gave West Coast a bath a couple of weeks ago, who were ranked number two in contested ball at the time. I think this will be tricky for North to win. I'm not ruling them out. Uh, this could be a candidate for their first win, but I will say that the Gold Coast, the good Gold Coast, show up and win by. 26 points. Then we've got Collingwood and the West Coast Eagles, the scene of the crime where West Coast beat them unexpectedly in 2022. We're all hoping for that again. And I say we all, I mean Eagles fans, but uh, I'm sure that uh, fans of other big clubs around the top parts of the ladder will also be hoping for a West Coast win. Um, yeah, tough one. Collingwood just coming off a, a very good win against Carlton. And, you know, I don't really know how much to analyze why Collingwood are the favorites and their pressure has returned even if they're not quite as slick and connecting for the front 50 to the back 50 as well as they once did. Their pressure and general ability to get the ball inside 50 has been well up. And West Coast are a little bit vulnerable here with Elliot Yo and Jake Waterman going to miss this week as well. If you had to pick two players West Coast couldn't afford to lose at the moment, it would be those two. My check as well, I think, has been ruled out with a hamstring injury. Um, it might be a few weeks for him as well. I, I mean, Collingwood should win this, right? I mean, to what extent could West Coast put up a fight? I think, I think they're a pretty solid Marvel team. And I think that will work in our favor. This is not at the MCG. If it was, I'd probably be tipping something closer to 12 goals. But I'll, I'll say it's under 40. Hopefully West Coast get closer, but I think I think that's a safe bet. And the final game of the round, if I'm not mistaken, is Adelaide versus the Brisbane Lions. This could actually be a really good game. I am hoping for that. Crows have gotten their act together. There's no doubt about that. They've beaten the Blues, the Power, and North Melbourne in the last five. So they've won three of their last five. Midfield seems to be playing quite well by comparison to how it was. And I think their back line has held up as uh, we talked about in the football come down. Brisbane have been up and down as well. They've beaten North. They've beaten the Demons away. They beat the Gold Coast Suns. They lost to two quality teams in GWS at Monica and Geelong, albeit in disappointing performances. So again, I'm not really too sure which side will bob up for Brisbane here. The head-to-head -head form, particularly at Adelaide Oval, is uh, it's a bit of a mixed bag. I think Adelaide won last year. Brisbane are okay at this ground. They've won the previous two clashes there, albeit Adelaide were a decent side in 2023 and rebuilding in 22 and 21. And Brisbane did lose to Port Adelaide there quite heavily last year. So they're okay there, but also can have their off days there as well. So not, not much to read into, long story short. I don't really know who to tip here. I think I still don't fully trust the Crows at the moment. I know that seems ridiculous. They've beaten some good teams, but I'm kind of going on gut feel here. I think they could play well and give Brisbane a real challenge. And if they do win this game, you know, Brisbane will be in dire straits and Adelaide will be right back in the mix to play finals, at least be in the conversation, I think. So I'm not really too sure who I'm going to tip here. Both teams were better last year and Adelaide won this one. Brisbane's two disappointing losses were against very, very good teams. So I think I'm going to lean toward a Brisbane close win by 14 points. But again, I'm not really sure about that one. So there we go. That rounds out round nine, guys. Have a look at the ladder. We've got Sydney and Geelong top. Wow, Essendon up in third. Wow. That one is uh, predicated on them winning. So they're up in third at six and two with one draw and 96%. That's bizarre. GWS in fourth. Who else have we got? We got Fremantle in the eighth. I think that's already the case. Gold Coast lingering in 10th spots. Who have we got down the bottom? The bottom four remains the same. That Brisbane Lions versus Adelaide game is important. You really feel like one team survives in the final race. In other words, the team that loses will be just about out. But anyway, guys, those are my tips. Let me know in the comments what yours are. Upset of the round, or I think maybe Adelaide over Brisbane, or Hawthorne over St Kilda. I don't know. that Both of those games are quite even, actually. Maybe the actual genuine upset is Fremantle potentially beating Sydney. I think that's that's on. I think this, this is a tough round to tip, to be honest. Game of the round, I'm going to go boring and say Carlton versus Melbourne. I think uh, those two teams are good, and they tend to produce close ca clashes. So that's my reasoning. But for now, I thank you for watching. I thank you for being subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one.